Hey T Squad, it's me Keisha, aka Color Me Pink, and I'm here with this week's All T All Shade, Real Housewives of New York City, season 14, episode 13 review. Next week is the season finale episode, and then we'll go right to the reunion. It's gonna be a two-part reunion, you guys. So in this episode, we see Cy call Aaron to tell her about her <clears throat> meeting with Jessel. And then we see Jessel go to visit Jenner at her home and Jenna is going to Scotland for a work event and says that she's, you know, sad she can't go to the couple's event that the ladies are going to have with their husbands. So then we go back to Cy and Aaron and Cy tells Aaron that Jessel took um, like 40 minutes to get, I mean, it's about 25 minutes to get warmed up when she did the do with Pivot or whatever. And they both was looking like, what is that about like? you needed 25 minutes to get revved up with your husband. Like, are you a hot pocket? Hot pocket. <laughs> so, um, then we see Jessel tell Jenna that she was 15 minutes late to the meeting, but then side tells Aaron that she was like 40 minutes late. And the fact that she didn't even call her and say, Hey, I'm late or anything like that. So, Sai says that, you know, Jessel tried to relate to her about her uncle being an alcoholic and everything, but it just didn't coagulate. And she just was like, no. Mm -mm. And Aaron agrees, like, that was the wrong way to try to relate to you. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like apples and oranges at the end of the day. And I get where both Aaron and Sai are saying, and I would agree. But I think what the difference is, and nobody's set and thought about this. Maybe in the Indian culture, and I don't know if I have any Indian subscribers, T-Squad members, but if I do, maybe in the Indian cultures, aunts and uncles mean a lot to them, like on the level of a mom and a dad. I don't know. So maybe that's why it touched her so much and affected her so much because her uncles and stuff are like another extension of a parent to her. And the fact that she lived with this uncle for however many years and had to be there with him, you know, when he was going through this probably affected her. Anybody that's ever dealt with an alcoholic knows that it's a very uh, um, strenuous situation. It can be very scary. It's very drama filled. It's very toxic. It's very, um, trying on you on you mentally and physically dealing with somebody like that like it's a lot you know what I'm saying so I wonder is that the case and like I said if any Indian um, T-Squad members are out there or anybody that knows about the Indian culture let me know is that the case and if that's the case maybe that's what should be voiced from Jessel you know what I'm saying to get a further understanding of why it affected her so much. So, um, Jenna in her confessional was like, I know she was trying to relate, but your mom is your mom. Like there's really no comparing the two. So, like I said, I get where side was coming from. I would have been looking at her like, mm, but like I said, maybe it's a cultural thing. So side then brings up private going to Vietnam for mileage points. <laughs> And Aaron was like, what? <laughs> like, who does that? Like, what is going on over there in that household? Like, I'm not understanding. And then Sai makes a comment suggesting that maybe he got a little boot thing over there. And I didn't feel like that was right or if it was fair. Like, we're not going to start playing with people's marriages and all of that type of stuff. Because then when somebody come after yours, you can't say nothing. Okay? Because you already opened that can of worms. So I didn't think that that was necessary. Even if you think it. You shouldn't have said it. You know what I'm saying? So, cause like, what if they are having marital problems and she's trying to fight through it or they're trying to fight through it? Like, you just never know what type of mental state people are in. And it's obvious that she was going through something mental. The fact that she hadn't had sex with her husband in what, a year or two? Like, come on, you gotta be a little bit more sensitive. So, Uber has the opportunity to do a collab with this restaurant and incorporate her Uber hot, uh, hot sauce, which is so fantastic. I'm so happy for her. Sai, um, auntie, who is her her mom's sister, is in town, and she shows her aunt Sophia this book that her husband David had made of all of her mom's artwork, 
And when she got to flipping through the book, I was like blown away at size mom's artistic abilities. Like, oh my gosh, she was great. Like, just imagine if she would have taken it seriously and really tried to do something with it. Like, she could have been a great artist. Like, I would have bought her work. Like, she was phenomenally good. And um, her aunt Sophia just bust out and cried and was like, I think about her every day and everything. And it was just super sad, you know, and so I cried and everything. But that was a beautiful thing that her husband did for her. So it's couples night. And before Jessel and Pavi get there, Cy and Aaron tell their husbands to get the truth out of Pavi on why he's going to Vietnam. Once again, I would hope that in real life, <clears throat> you wouldn't be this nosy, but considering the fact that we're on a reality show and we need drama, okay, I'm gonna let it pass. So Jessel and Pavit arrive and Jessel in her confessional was like, obviously there's tension in the air. Honestly, I don't know where this animosity comes from. I think Cy maybe doesn't like me because I dress better than her. <laughs> and I was like, Jessel, girl, I love you, but no, you do not dress better than Cy. And I will agree with you all. Cy's fashion on the show sucked. And I'm like, where is the Cy that we see on Instagram? Like, and on her YouTube, like, I don't know what was going on with these outfits this season. It was given very much Upper East Side Mom. And I was like, what's happening here? Like, no. Um, but I agree with Jessel. I don't understand why Cy is just being so visceral when it comes to her. So Pavit going to Vietnam comes up, child. And Pavit explains the situation. He said the ticket normally costs 15000 And I was able to get mine for like 900 and something. So I bought three of them. Aaron was like, so why aren't you taking Jessa? Like, why is she going? And he was like, because I already used two of them. And Sal was like, but still, why are you going? Now, I would agree with like, okay, you had three tickets. Why you ain't take your wife to Vietnam with you at least once? You don't think she need a break? Like, I understand you say you need a break in a minute just to get away, but it would have been nice for you to think about your wife and take her. Maybe that's the reason why it took her 25 minutes to get revved up when you're having sex because you need to mentally make love to your wife first, Pavit. Maybe nobody told you that or taught you that, but yeah, take your wife away to Vietnam and still get your mileage points. Once you get double if she go, like, I don't know. So like I said, uh, so I was like, but still, why are you going? So he says that he goes for the flight experience, you know, the alone time, the quiet or whatever, and his mileage. And he said a bon me sandwich. Do I think that Pavit is cheating on Jessel? No, I don't. I honestly do think that he does it as a way to get away. I really honestly does. But I also feel like Pavit is a little clueless when it comes to romance, <laughs> to be honest with you. So Cy once again wonders in her confessional if he got a woman over there. And I was like, stop, Cy, stop. Because when people start <laughs> questioning David, don't start crying. So Jessel is annoyed at this point by the questions because she like, why do y'all care so much about where my husband going? Okay, if I ain't worried, why are you? So Cy goes to the bathroom and Aaron uses this as an opportunity to ask Jessel, is she all right after the meeting with Cy? And I was like, Aaron, you so messy. You just love to keep shit going. So Jessel tells her that she don't know what she's done to Cy. Cy comes back and enters the conversation and Sai says I felt like the reason you wanted to meet me to meet with me could have been discussed over the phone and just was like well, you know we all should have a lunch you know what I'm saying I just wanted to talk to you and you know clear up everything because on the boat you were upset and so I was like I was upset because you're not understanding what we're saying to you it's like there's no accountability for anything and you're talking in circles then you bring up my mom I'm gonna be honest with you I don't want to talk about my mom in that aspect I was actually offended to be honest and she's right and okay with saying how she felt in that moment, okay? She may come across very curt when she's saying it, but that's just the type of person that Cy is. I'm the type of person as well. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I'm just going to tell you how I feel about things. And you might think I'm trying to be mean, but I'm just literally just talking to you and telling you how I feel. You know what I'm saying? So, um... Jessel says, I thought the situation with my uncle would, you know, relate to you. I wasn't trying to be disrespectful or anything like that. So, um, Uber arrives and is like, why are they arguing? Like, what is going on here? 
Jesu then says to Sire, I didn't know that would, that would be something that would offend you. And Sire says, I just want you to be honest. And Jesu was like, I've been honest about everything. I've never lied to you about anything. And Sire was like, you are a liar. You just lied about um, Pavit going to Vietnam. You told me that he was going in a week. Now we find out from him that he don't even have a set date or whatever yet. And the producers then go back to the day that they had the conversation and she never said that he was leaving in a week. Jessel said he'll be leaving in a few weeks. So Sai, you are 100% in the wrong <laughs> and mad for no reason. And you owe her an apology. And you look stupid. And this was what I was fearing for Sai because I've been a huge fan of hers for like the last three years via her YouTube. I love her style. I love her vlogs and everything. And I was very fearful that she was going to get on this show and we were going to see another side of her and it was going to make me look like, mm, it was going to put a bad taste in my mouth. And I still like Sai, but I do think that she needs to work on her personality. Because it's one thing to be strong or whatever, but it's getting to the point where it's just like unlikable. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, mm, chill out mama. So, um, Jessa was like, you know, I'm tired of this mean girl ish. Side then brings up her being late to the lunch and says that she didn't even want to come. And she over her and she calls her F and B when she walks away. And I was like, well, okay, but, uh, you ain't had that energy when Uber checked you when y'all was in Anguilla. You said they're on mute because you know who to do that with and who not to do that with. But okay, Cy. Uh, <laughs> so Cy then goes over with the husbands and try to play golf with them. And Jessel in her confessional says she hasn't seen this Biz Nye yet. I've been very PC. Well, girl, we need to see it. We need to see it because I, I feel like Jessel's one of them people where She's all bark, no bite. And the stuff that she does say, I think that she think that it's like, oh, I got her. And it's really like, no, you, you were just having a conversation. <laughs> like You didn't do nothing, Jessel. So uh, after that, the husbands joined the ladies and Cy is going off about Jessel to Aaron. And Cy says, you told me he was leaving next week. And that was the whole point of the staycation. Aaron was like, she's such a liar. They need to get on the same page. And Cy says, he doesn't know she's lying. And once again, she never lied. You misheard what she said or only heard the weak thing and took it and ran with it. So here goes David, Cy's husband, asking Uba, like, why she ain't in a relationship, why she ain't married or whatever. And Uber asked the guys to tell them what made them know that their wives were the one. David said something really sweet to Cy, and that was an actual answer, okay? That didn't have anything to do with him and what he wanted. It was about how she made him feel, okay? Abe says the biggest thing with somebody who is going, the biggest thing with somebody who is going to keep me honest Somebody I can have an exciting life with, loves to travel, loves to try new things, loves food, loves music, loves schmecks. They can put up with my ish and I can put up with her ish for the most part. He just said all the things that he wanted in a wife, not what made her fit the bill. Like what was it about her? So he didn't give a good answer to me <coughs> at all. So then it's Pavit's turn and Pavit says, life is an adventure and you don't want to live a boring life. And I just want to travel and eat and have fun and do whatever. And she's the perfect partner for that is being able to do what you love with somebody, with someone else. And they put up with your ish. Here goes Sai and her confessional. I'm sorry. You married her because she lets you do whatever you want. Him and Abe literally just answered the question the same way. And you're only... <clears throat> pointing out what Pavit said. Did you not hear what Abe said? They literally had the same answer. Trash answers, to be honest with you, both of them. But nobody's pointing that out. And what you mean you only married her because she let you do whatever she want to do. She just cool with letting him do whatever. Do I think that 
Jessa wants more out of the marriage, but she's playing this. I don't care. I'm a cool girl. I'm a cool wife. I don't nag him. I do. I think that she wants more romance and affection from him, but I think that she is too prideful to ask maybe. And he's too clueless to see that that needs to happen. But maybe them being on this show will show them what they need to do to fix their marriage and get that spark going. Um, so Uber shows side pics of her new boot thing and says that she's the only one who knows and keep it between them. Okay. She, the, she hasn't given, given us a name, haven't shown us a picture, the audience or anything. She made sure to show side her phone like this. Okay. Now this plays into what's going to happen on next week's episode on the season finale. So at the end of the episode, Brent and Jenna visit Jessel at her home and Jessel tells them what happened with Cy um, <clears throat> at the couple's night and Pavit joins their conversation. Jenna was like from the outside looking in, losing her mother the way she did, I think is very different for her than an uncle. And then considering that Cy had just lost her mom, like this was fresh for her. So Jessa was like, you know, her energy towards me was very cold. She called me a prude. She called me a diva. Jenna then turns to Pavit and says, is she a diva? And Pavit was like, Jess, no. Is Cy bipolar? Yes. And Brynn was like, I think you should retract that. And Jessa was like, yeah. And I was like, yeah, because you can't make comments like that now, Pavit. You know, and if the cameras weren't there, he could have said it. But if the cameras being there, you know, people with bipolar are going to take offense to, you know, him saying it. The world is just so sensitive now. But okay. So, Pavel was like, okay, I retract it. But she also thinks she's lying about everything. Brian tells her that Aaron said that Pavel said he liked her because she let him do what whatever he wants. And that he wasn't wearing his red ring that night. So, Jessel tells Pavel, does he remember what he said that night when, you know, the guys were asked to say why they wanted to marry their wives? And he was like, no, nah, I was like five scotches in. I don't remember what I said. <laughs> and so... Uh, Jessa was like, he never, I, it never had anything to do with him being able to do whatever he wants. He's never won his wedding ring. He lost it two weeks after we got married and we never replaced it. And, um, she says, uh, but let me just close the loop on this though. He's my best friend. And you can tell that they really do love each other. They have like a friendship marriage you know what I'm saying and I think that might have to do a lot with their culture you know what I'm saying um so she tears up and I felt bad for Jessel I really did because people were questioning how her husband feels about her mind you if she was going through postpartum she was already feeling bad about herself this is only going to make her feel worse and more insecure like this not helping at all so Brian says that she needs to stick up for herself. And Jessel was like, I did, I did. I, I, I gave it to her. You didn't, you didn't Jessel. You do need to stick up for yourself. And she cries some more and says that she feels like that they're targeting her. And I agree. I do agree and think that Aaron and Cy are like piling on her and it's not right. And it's not fair um, at all. And I don't think that it's a big, Ooh, because he's not wearing a wedding ring. Like everybody don't want to wear no ring. I'd be honest with you, I love rings, but if I were ever to get married, I don't see me wearing my wedding ring every day because rings irritate me after a while. I would have to take that thing off. No, I'll get a tattoo or something, but no, nah, I don't want all that on me. No, absolutely not. But um, overall, I'm going to give tonight's episode um, a B minus, a B minus, a B minus. It was a, a good episode, but I'm going to have to say the MVP of this episode was Jessel. And uh, the loser of this episode was Cy. Very disappointed. Very, very disappointed. Team Jessel. Y'all let me know what y'all thought about the episode down below in the comment section. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. I love you, T-Squad, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.